Okay, so let's keep talking about the method of undetermined coefficients. So if you didn't watch the first video, that's no big deal. Uh, this is the part where most people have a hard time. So this example should hopefully clear it up. So the question will say, find the form of y sub p. This is, this is the hard part. So let's do a couple examples. We'll start with easy ones and we'll, we'll make them harder. So let's say we have a differential equation, y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals 10. So, and let's say that the homogeneous solution or the complementary solution is c sub 1 e to the negative x plus c sub 2 e to the negative x. Let's say that's what we have. And the question, I'll write the answer over here. So the answer to the question that we're being asked, we're going to do it over here. Um, the question is to find the form of y sub p. So I like to do this in two steps. This is just uh, how I do it. So first I make an initial guess. So my initial guess, I only look at this. I do not look at anything else, not even the arrows. Well, sure, you can look at the arrows, but the 10, right, this number here. So based off that, our form should just be a constant, so A. Then I, then I think to myself, but I'll write it modified before I think, so I haven't looked yet. Now I look at the complementary solution. And then you say, okay, uh, are there any constants here? No, so it doesn't change. So the answer in this case is y sub p equals a. a. That would be the particular solution. All right, b. What if it's y double prime minus y prime equals negative 3? And then if you work it out via magic, you end up with c1 plus c sub 2 e to the x. All right, now we'll write the answer over here, answer. Right, we're, or we're answering the question. The question is, what is the form of yp? So first, let's look at the initial. So when you look at the initial, when you're making your initial guess, you only look here. Base it off nothing else. This makes it a lot easier, especially when they get harder. So in this case, our initial guess is a, because we have a constant here, right? 3 is a number. It's a constant. So we have a constant. Now let's see if it needs to be modified. So modified. So y sub p. Now, when you're making your modified guess, then you look at the homogeneous solution. Oh, look, there's a constant here, right? This is a constant. So in this case, we need to multiply this by x. So that is our form of yp. That's what we're going to plug into the differential equation and use to find a, right? So first you make your initial. When you're making the initial guess, you only look here, where all the arrows are pointing. Then you look at the homogeneous solution, and then you ask yourself, you know, is there repetition? You know, do the terms in yp appear in yc anywhere? They do. Here we have a constant. Here we have a constant. So we need to get rid of it or modify it uh, by multiplying it by x. You do that so that the solutions are linearly independent, right? That's why you do that. All right, C. Let's do another one. Let's, keep, let's go through the alphabet. Let's just keep going uh, forever. Y double prime uh, minus Y prime plus one fourth Y equals three plus E to the X over two. All right, in this case, uh, via some mathematics, you can find the homogeneous solution. It's C sub one E to the X over two plus C two times X e to the x over 2. All right, so now we're going to find the answer, right? The answer to the question here is what is the form of yp? So let's make our initial our initial guess. So when you make your initial guess, again, you only look at the right-hand side, so we're only looking here. So looking at the right-hand side, it's going to be a plus b e to the x over 2, right? The a takes care of the 3, and this piece here takes care of the e to the x over 2. Now let's see if we need to modify it. So modified, modified. All right, so y sub p. Now when you're making your modified guess, you look at the homogeneous solution or the complementary solution. So in this case, a is okay. There's no constants hanging out by themselves here, right? They're all being multiplied by exponentials. So we can keep a. Nothing is going to happen to a. But here we have e to the x over 2. And here we have x e to the x over 2. So here we have to multiply this by x squared, right? You need to always be 
one higher than what you have, right? You want your solutions to be linearly independent and this takes care of it. So that was a good example. I think that one uh, was a little bit trickier. Uh, let's try another one. So A, B, C, D. D is the next one. Let's keep going. D. Actually, yeah, let's do D. D. Let's try this one. Uh, y double prime plus Y equals, oh, this one's hard, 3x sine x. This one's, this one's super hard. Uh, here, the complementary solution will be c sub 1 cosine x plus c sub 2 sine x. All right, here's where it gets tough. All right, so now we'll write the answer down. What is the answer? The form of yp. So let's make our initial. So this is going to be a long one. So our initial guess will be, I'll write it underneath, our initial guess will be y sub p, and we're looking only here to make our initial, right? So it uh, looks like we have a first degree polynomial and we have a trig function. So we have ax plus b sine x plus cx plus d cosine x. All right, now let's make the modified. Now, is, are we going to have to modify it? I don't know. I honestly haven't looked. Right now, I'm just looking at what I'm writing. I'm writing yp. Uh, let's see. Uh-oh. Yep. Yep. Here we have cosine x, and here we have sine x. But here we have, look at this. This is, this is sine x, b sine x. And look at this. We have d cosine x. So we have to modify it. We have to multiply everything by x. So here it'll be ax squared plus bx sine x. This one's tricky, plus cx squared plus dx cosine x. I guess there's a couple ways to think about it, but an easy way is perhaps when you see the cosine here and you see the sine here, think, well, you know, you do have a sine here and you do have a cosine here. So you actually need to multiply everything by, by x. So that would be your modified yp, right? So kind of sneaky. Let's do one more if I don't run out of room like I did in the last video. So E. Let's try y triple prime minus 6y double prime equals 2 minus cosine x. 2 minus cosine x. In this case, via some mathematical magic, uh, the homogeneous solution is c sub 1 plus c sub 2 times x plus c sub 3 times e to the 6x. So what's the answer to this question? The answer is to find the form of yp. So let's look at our initial. Now again, when you look at the initial, you only look here. So the initial will be y sub p equals a. The a takes care of the 2, so done. And now we have a cosine, so that means we need to involve both, both sine and cosine. So b sine x plus c cosine x c cosine x. Wow, that looks weird. Now let's look at the modified. M modified. Now, do we need to change anything here? Let's let's look. So y sub p. All right, well, here we have a constant, and here we have c2 sub times x. But here we have a, so it looks like we have to modify the a by multiplying it by x squared, right? One higher than x. Plus, and then this has nothing to do with these guys. So we're okay, so this is okay. So we'll just write it down again. B sine x plus C cosine x. I'm having a hard time writing the word cosine. So that would be the modified answer, right? So that would be your form of yp. I think that's good. We've done uh, a lot of the harder guessing. So after this, I guess maybe I'll make a video or two of how to, how to solve these. So I hope I hope this helps uh, someone out there who's working on undetermined coefficients. It's a really, really powerful method. But remember, it only works if the right-hand side is uh, an exponential, a polynomial, a sine or a cosine, or any linear combination of those. Uh, for everything else, you could try something like variation of parameters.